we could bring cutting edge commercial innovation to our warfighters. Today, I can give Avis and AIG more advanced AI than I can bring the Army and the Air Force. If we want to effectively deter, deter those that, that threaten U.S. interests, we must spend at least 5% of our budget on capabilities that will terrify our adversaries. Absolutely. I think a lot of what you're getting at is we, we kind of implicitly all believe or explicitly believe that AI is valuable, but how do you make it viable? It's not viable without trust. And that trust requires a real foundation where you understand the data that went into it. You understand why, to the extent you're not getting behaviors you expected, you're getting those behaviors. And so I think a big part of this approach is, I, I, you know, I'd welcome a regulatory approach to this, is also realizing that there's a huge and outsized role for the department to lead by going through it. It's only by red teaming, adopting and red teaming, trying to break it, that we're going to really understand and develop the appropriate rigorous testing and evaluation framework. Uh, I would say the analogy to cybersecurity is great here. You can't just have a blue team effort to protect yourself. You learn as much or more from red teaming it that defines how you defend yourself going forward. So I think these are actually two sides of the same coin, and we should be practicing them together and aggressively. The defense is data management practices, and how could they be improved to make sure that every bit of data that we're collecting is available for our usage, not limited by silos between private contractors? That's kind of the follow-up to the first. I'd like to build on the stool analogy there, and I'll get to your follow-up question. Okay. Uh, you have to, you know, you, you can't make one leg of the stool long and tall first. That's not a very good stool. Uh, and so I, I would urge us to resist the temptation to say, first, we need the perfect data foundation, right. then we go on. Uh, actually, it is, if we look at the Project Maven example there, it is the fact that we suddenly had the algorithms that pointed us to the fact that the data was garbage. So these things move together. And we have to simultaneously coordinate the investment and not slice these up into different responsibilities. And it is now the fact that we have these powerful large language models that's telling us that we actually don't have enough GPU capacity in the world. Uh, and so, you know, I, I think this little analogy is a very good one. Now, to, to, to your question here, I, I would say th this idea that we are operational is profound. It is our advantage. We do things everywhere in the world. I would say we, we definitely collect more data. But we also throw away an enormous amount. Part of my experience has been every place we've shown up in a new operational context, there is data we could be collecting that in a prior generation of software was perceived to be useless. And if I can impart one message today, it's that we are facing a moment in which existing roadmaps and systems are insufficient. We must completely rethink what we are building and how we are building it. Software and AI will shape everything, even toasters, but most certainly tanks. To succeed, we need to cut through the existing ways we organize and procure weapon systems and begin with software and AI first. This will be disruptive and emotional. Many incumbents in government will be affected and they will feel threatened and dislocated. Many careers that have been built on mature technologies, weapon systems and platforms will also be affected. 